Then you could put it into YethNet, right? Into, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can embed it, right? If it's on YouTube. If it's on YouTube. There's no other way to get video <laughs> in there. I don't know how Laura's been doing it. She must have a video server. She, yeah, she, um, I think, uses her university server and then... As a host. Settings, yeah, hosting it there. That way she can keep it contained within that YapNet site, uh, like when she talked with Terry and I and whoever else. Yeah. Uh, and her cello videos. Well, let's do an official start then, so you can... Uh, okay. It kind of is easier for somebody else to watch, if that's... Or are we recording it for us? We're recording it for anybody, as far as I'm concerned. We can put it up somewhere and spread the word if anybody wants to come that's fine if not okay <laughs> um but the as far as i'm concerned the the reason for getting together is to see whether we've got something that's uh kind of minimally viable to to publish however we are thinking about it and uh, i had some ideas that uh, or remarkably half baked, but I'm willing to <laughs> present present a little bit about that. I, do you want me to share what I've got so far? Yeah. Do you want to share your screen <clears throat> where you had the uh, call for papers up? Because it'd be good to refresh our memory on that. Okay. Let me switch back to the call for papers. And and I saw your flip grid, Kevin. So I know you've found the book. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Right here. Your your children stealing your books, that's pretty bad, Kevin. <laughs> the comic book. <laughs> Until they start looking at the pictures and they go, oh, <clears throat> boring. No, actually, my, my older son is really in, into the kind of stuff Nick's talking about, I think. Yeah, I, I teach, uh, this is the last thing I teach in my intro to lit class is uh, this section because it's fun. I teach the, uh, what, what, he, what does he call it? Um, oh, I'm having a mental uh, block here where he, you do the, the one, the single day. Oh, yeah, uh, grids and gestures. Yes, yeah, grids and gestures. Yeah. And I do that at the end of the semester with my students, and it's, it's quite nice. They, they love it. So, uh, yeah. So here's our, our CFP here. All right. And the 30th is... Yeah, so the third little week lesson, is um, little lesson. two and a half weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Friday, two weeks. And in addition to this sort of overview, not sure whether it says it in here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm reading about the middle of the screen there. About here? Uh, new potential for the application of, yeah, in the middle of that paragraph new potential for the application of Susanus's work, mm -hmm. Germain, to re-envisioning theory, expanding methodology and transforming pedagogy. That's uh, it. That's the one right there, right? Yeah. Or is, or is think, it? Well, the, there was a sort of an expansion of that in a tweet uh, from Nick when he sort of flagged it to the CL MOOC um, crew and <clears throat> it did sort of talk about professional development somewhere there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it's in this overview or it was in the, the uh, tweet, but I think uh, where we're sort of coming from is, is uh, professional development, like yeah. uh, andragogy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Self-directed learning. But there's also that, that group aspect where we've not only used it for ourselves, but we've used it for mm -hmm. a, a group. I think, too, that next sentence uh, where you highlighted that, if you go up, Terry, again. So it's uh, rather than provide answers, right, to questions, it's meant to generate opening. So, I mean, I like the phrasing that. I think that um, that leaves some different possibilities for what they might be interested in. Um, so just so I'm clear, um, they're at this point they're only looking for the abstract, right? Um, and looking down, 500 words. 500 words, yeah. Connection. Okay. All right. So 500 words is not too much. 
Yeah, so even though we're working on sort of like an artefact in the background or we've got some ideas of, of how to do an artefact around the collection of what we've been doing, what we really need is the 500 words for in the next two weeks, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds better and better. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. <laughs> yeah. I, because that uh, potential... What was the words potential for you know we we've used this as the way of getting people to respond mm -hmm. to generate openings mm -hmm. uh, so you're thinking of uh, like when we've had them on uh, hangouts and and done other activities and uh, in relation to um seal mooc and other things like that wendy is that I, I know we i know we had the whole list of all the links of different things we had done at one point Yes, yeah, certainly the um, the hangout where we had Nick come, that that was generating an opening for us mm -hmm. as, as mm -hmm. far as the hangout went and the people that were in the hangout. But then ongoing, because we've even gone back now and, and reviewed that, and there's been kickoff uh, work, I think, from, you know, from that. And uh, pretty much every time we interconnect with one of Nick's pages or... Uh, something that he's made public, there seems to be that opening, I think, for response. So one of the things that I really like is that, um, as we've been talking about with Yapnet, is the the opening for um, showing work in progress. Mm -hmm. So while I guess it's not necessarily directly related to unflattening, but I think he did show progress pictures as he was drawing unflattening as well yes, he did. and certainly notes notes around he includes in the book you know all the notes at the back there of how it come about and I think that's really really unique the, the longer that I'm in academia the more that I'm realizing that it's not a really accepted mode of practice to to share in progress stuff and and he does it so well really so i think that's a area that i'd like to include <clears throat> I like that i think too it um so that ethos of um i don't know how to say it um kind of working not on the fly but you know, you know working in progress and sharing with others right, right that, working, working um, out loud working out working loud. out loud yeah um, is something that, um, I mean, it doesn't just stem from his participation with us, right, as, as in the network, but um, certainly um, is a great example of it. And um, I also think, too, that I'm thinking of uh, the, um, the months where we've done, like, drawings every day, kind of themes. Like, I think art really kind of came, not from Nick exactly, but from that time period of we really start to explore kind of artwork as a way of, um, of sharing and uh, some way to weave that in perhaps would be helpful. I think the word unfurling is um, kind of the key one, you know, um, because it, it, it fits unflattening perfectly. You know, when you think about something that's unfurled, it's opened up into something. And uh, unflattening's the same way, you know. His whole approach to um, flatlands in the book mm -hmm. is is an example of that. So, for me, you know, when I think about the word unfurling, I think about yes, I think about that Nick Vid video, and I think about the works working out loud that people have done. I think um, I've created lesson plans. Uh, I think all of these artifacts are examples of unfurlings, especially the ones like Padlet and Think, ThingLink that include other people and other people's ideas. You know, it's kind of an unfurling of the, of the idea of the possibilities in Susanus's work. Um, and, you know, if we can reflect on, you know, I think that would be part of what we are doing is reflecting on how Susanus's Nusannis, work is unfurled for us and for the people in our community yeah for sure it it needs to relate to the way that we're doing it because that might be unique uh to 
to how other people might have uh, approached it or used used the work. I just come across that word unfurling yesterday in a children's book, and so I'll get the direct quote for you um, after after this hangout. But it's it's talking about a man of warship, and so it's describing the the man of warship, and it says that at the command of make sail, the uh, there's about a hundred sailors that go up in and unfurl the sails, and it's really well. It's very succinct but short and, and you really get that picture of, of the sails, these massive, you know, rolls of, of uh, material coming down and all of a sudden being useful uh, by the time that they're in their place and, and the wind's caught them. So, yeah, I think that um, that word unfurling is, is very, uh, we can build on that in the yeah. way that we've used it. I think that'd be a really important word to focus on at the beginning of any 500 words that we might write. Yeah. So how uh, will we go about writing that? I guess we can do a Google Doc. <laughs> yeah, probably the easiest way, I think. You think. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, and so 500 words is uh, two paragraphs. Now more uh, it's two pages uh, roughly page. double spaced. That's what okay. I tell my students. Two hundred fifty words to a page. Yeah. That's a long. That's a long um, abstract. That's a long abstract. That's a really long uh, abstract. An if, abstract if not two hundred words. Yeah, that's a. Um, well, it says no more than five hundred, right? Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so maybe so we've mentioned we mentioned three different areas. We've got the unfurling. As, mm -hmm. the, as the primary uh, word, uh, there's the, the opening of possibilities or generating possibilities and the sharing of work in progress uh, through, it, it sort of encouraged us to share our work in progress, mm -hmm. like the grids and gestures is is uh, not meant to be a finished work you know it's when you do that example it's sort of for me it kicked off a blog post after the grids and gestures example so hmm. yeah that was, was there any other themes that you could think of so if we do a sort of a paragraph on those three well the only thing that comes to mind is like the main theme of his book but i, I, I i'll just throw it out i don't think that this has to be part of what we're doing but you know that idea of um kind of leveling the field of literacy to make sure that image and visual are an equal par with wordage. <laughs> Here we, have to, we have to write about that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we should just send in a wordless picture book <laughs> as our app. <habits. laughs> well, that's, that's kind of my, what I wanted to do with, uh, with the idea of, a, uh, of having a, like a director's cut. <laughs> or com director's commentator commentation commentating on on this in that uh, uh adding a voice to the artifacts that we're talking about would be a lot of fun and would be kind of keeping in the revolutionary nature of unflattening because as far as i'm concerned susanis's book is the only one is the first one and i think the only one the only doctoral dissertation in, in graphic form that I that I know of, and that um, you know we should. One of the things we can do is honor that with something a little different ourselves. Yeah, yeah and I think it it plays really well to the uh, so the literature around multimodality. That's what yeah. I've been looking at. So I've just finished a uh, academic paper on voice thread, and some of the theoretical underpinnings of that was that multimodality, you know, needs to be available for students. Uh, they also need a lot of support to do it, but that idea that just text only or just word only or just visual only um, doesn't really cut it anymore, that we need to have, you know, we can have the visual plus the commentary, we can have the, the comic with the, uh, 
so I think we can definitely find some support for that yeah you know, that multimodality yeah yeah I'm, I think Kevin and I have been lobbing that ball over the tennis net for a <laughs> long time and uh, and we do it so well in CL MOOC mm -hmm. you know like yeah the, every, everybody did that it's that making aspect that mm -hmm. that we're focusing on not just doing one thing with one thing we don't just write words with you know in a text format it's it's always putting out the possibility that you can make something else to represent the concept with all the tools that you've got at your hand yeah i think all that that that's all bound up in the kind of three ideas that you kind of listed out too that we're talking about i think uh, because if that working out loud wasn't there, people wouldn't even try that, right? Um, you know, so that like each of those pieces might be a, maybe we could find a way to expand out, um, I don't know, if ex as examples, but certainly um, that, that, that underpinning philosophy that you know, makes people or allows people to take a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, and that's what I get from Nick's work is that it's an invitation to, you know, he's, he's published pages or said these pages are available. It's, it's like an invitation to go, okay, what, what can you do with it? And it's more, it seems to be more of an open invitation than other books that are just, you have to go to the library to get them out. When you see his sharing on Twitter and, and then a response from, you know, something that we might create, it's that sort of invitation going, okay, come on. <laughs> look mm -hmm. at it and, and try and make something of it. It seems to me like there's a, um, one of the things that's happened is that there's kind of like, it's a, a ripple. Um, and there's a primary ripple that can, comes out, you know, when we look at the book and we all engage with the book. And then, then there's secondary tertiary ripples that go when we begin to um, look at working out loud or work in progress, whatever you want to call it. And it kind of unfurls, you know, the unfurling happens in waves, right? Over not only just immediate, but over time. So, uh, you know, we might look at it at the way, different ways it is unfurled initially and then as, as ongoing up to the present time. I mean, ultimately, that's what we might want to do. I like that. Um, a mature unfurling <laughs> and a, a young unfurling. Yeah. But yeah, it, it does start somewhere. You know, if you think of the sail rolling down, it, the unfurling starts and then it changes as the sail comes down. Like it, it's definitely, uh, there's, in that case, there is an end point because you, you've got to tie off the sail and let it take the boat. But, you know, maybe there's no endpoint to the um, flattening yeah and i think that uh, these secondary um things can relate to the to susanis's work to unflattening like um people who create lesson plans like i did for my intro to lit class and people who use use it for i don't know for whatever purpose you know what you all have used it for what you've seen other people use it for and those i i think of those as kind of uh, secondary you know that's it's using his philosophy maybe even his works but using the idea of work in progress and you know annotating and because there's a lot of other things you learn or i learned uh in considering you know the just the work itself I mean, it's just so full of you know, mm -hmm. classical allusions and philosophy and, you know, stuff that's outside the bounds of the book itself that, that uh, are part of the unfurling, you know, it's a part of the learning. I think that's... And that, think, that aspect of, of going outside the bounds, that's sort of why I've been thinking of augmented reality as a way of, of showing... Um, work i definitely think we need to you know provide something other than text for our yeah. submission 
um, even if we're in the 500 words, if we only talk about it initially saying we're just writing text, but what's with that? You know, <laughs> why, yeah. why is this book or what form is this book going to take and what ability do we have to look outside of the book covers? But the augmented reality that we've found so far, which is Flipgrid uh, AR and the leftover of what was HP Reveal, what's it called? Uh, Aura. 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 Oh, yeah. One of those words. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems that Flipgrid AR is doing similar, um, but it's a lot more comfortable because it's just scanning a QR code and then you're getting the video on top of wherever the QR code is. Yeah. Um, but that's one, like I would like to, you know, investigate a bit more sophisticated augmented reality, but that's what we've got at the moment is. Well, I wonder, I wonder if um, um, annotation is one of, we should keep that as in the back of our head as like one of those, maybe we need a fourth kind of thing. Because I'm thinking, first of all, all the work we all do around annotation of different things, right? Um, and certainly the AR possibility is there, but also in Nick's book, there are pages where he pulls art from earlier in the book and then annotates himself inside the book, right? So that idea of, is there a way to think about layering top of his layers, you know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking, is there a way to kind of make that part of how we're envisioning? I, I don't have it all in my head how that would kind of, how that would happen, but. Uh, I'll be back in one minute. Okay. But I was just thinking that idea that if there are, I mean, I have to go back and kind of see where that is again, but there's pieces where he pulls in his earlier, from earlier in the book, and makes kind of commentary and riffs off it. Uh, it'd be kind of neat to add on top of that as well. Yeah, you can almost think, uh, you know, that the call outs on a, on the graphic novel page like this are annotations of a sort, you know, um, where the, the image is is quite clear, and the and that the call, the call outs on the call out boxes and and uh, balloons on the page are what pin it down. Mm -hmm. I I can't imagine. I mean, I don't know what this book would be without the text, and I don't know what it would be without the image, but. I do know what, you know, together these are, these are, these kind of unfurl, if you want to say that, into um, something that is larger than both, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's Hermione's bag in Harry Potter, <laughs> <laughs> bigger on the outside, in the inside than on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been upgraded. Um, so I, I was going to show this um, when Wendy comes back. Is she, is she back yet? I can't see her on no, this. No, no. Yeah, yeah I'm back. Um, I was going to show this just real quick, this demo that I did. And, you know, be kind because I just wanted to show how you could take links. Come on, you're amongst friends. And uh, you, I'm, I'm, I'm working out loud here. I'm unfurling something here for you both. Um, <laughs> this is web recorder? Yes, yeah, web recorder. Uh, but it could just as easily be done with Zoom and Google Docs or Zoom and any other list of links that you'd care to do it with. And you just get together on Zoom and you have, a, uh, have the link set up that, the way you want them, you know, beginning, middle, and end, and then we would do our commentary over the top of that. And we could do it, we could have some set things planned out, and we could have improv as well. Um, but that's just, that's just the idea. Yeah, that's beyond, we got to get this, this first thing done, and then we can think about that. But let me show, let me show you this. Okay, am I, are you all visible here? Can you see this? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I just put uh, this recording, I zoomed, zoomed web recorder, and I'm just going to play it. No, are you not sharing your screen yet? Okay. Oh, I see it. Oh, you do? Yeah, you, you don't see it? Uh, hmm. Let me change. 
Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. We good? Mm -hmm. You can try. It? Okay. Just doing two, three, four. <clears throat> Just doing a short test of the Zoom here along with web recorder. Let's, uh, let's see. Here's Padlet ever made. Includes a lot of our responses. We're all here. There's Kevin, there's me. No, there's Wendy right there. Scintillating, isn't it? <laughs> Need some music in the background or something. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> can't get it. Okay. Uh, it doesn't play nice with some sites, right? Yeah, it's uh here's Wendy's twisted pairs. Yeah, so it's sort of like digging deeper mm -hmm. and moving around corners. Yes. <clears throat> There's something that I wrote on my blog post. Hmm. Yeah, we could do a map so to, to, to guide listening. how we present it. Mm -hmm. Nice gift there for un unfurling, unfurling. Here's video. This is maybe the one that Nick did with us. Oh, okay. This is what Kevin did. Yeah, pretty cool. I know this thing link won't work. I'm trying to begin just to make sure. Do you have any hypothesis in this example? I don't. The links and pictures. But I think it would be. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> well, so we talked about now comment earlier, Terry, right? Right. I mean, if Nick gave permission to some, he chose a page that would work, we could annotate the image and now comment. Maybe even with QR code. I don't know. Mike could work. Um, the whole idea behind, for me, behind using a tool like Web Recorder is that. Um, it seems like our blogs and posts are places where media, multimedia goes to die because, <laughs> you know, because things just die, you know, things like, uh, like Ziga and uh, Popcorn Maker and et cetera, et cetera. And the whole, I don't know if you're familiar, you know, Internet Archive is, is a fabulous source for information, but it's also a fabulous place to archive materials and web recorder actually yeah, so when you, make, when you make web record, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just, it does yeah. the whole thing if it can. Now it has trouble with sites like ThingLink and, you know, it, does, it doesn't do everything. But if you go to like a YouTube video and it, uh, it starts, once you get to there, if you're recording, it saves the, it'll, it, it actually plays the, the YouTube inside of itself and it saves the YouTube video so that when, when you save the archive, it's, it's in a, it's a, it's called a WARC file, a web archive file, and anybody can go to it and download it as a torrent. So to me, it's kind of next generation uh, ways to save, um, to archive material that's being lost. Lots of stuff is being lost. You, we, but we, we all know it. Um, hack pad, you know. Um, but you can order, you can order your re your uh, files there on the left. So you've uh, got. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you can. Uh, I think what you have to do is is uh, you have to put them in as you. What you do is you just go to the site while you've got it recording. So you click record and you go to the site. And it records everything that's in there and it scrolls to the bottom of the page and it, it takes, yeah. it sucks everything in. Some of these are huge files. Um, so it's just kind of a, a, an idea. 
So instead of having this this list of of, of sites over here, you we could go back to the um, to the other one of the other things that we did, like the Google Doc, or we can create our own doc, and just you know find ten items in there and um, create a uh, create our own little Zoom uh, or whatever you want to use and uh, use that. So. Um, yeah, I, I really like I really like that idea. Uh, I think I think we can definitely work with. I'm happy to uh, uh, you know if we come if we come up with a list a list of links that we want to use. Um, I'm happy to you know organize it on a some software or use Web Recorder or whatever you all want to do. But I think that should be. I mean, I think it really honors Nick's um, risk that he took. In doing, I mean, you know, I've taught. I, I know a lot of people who go through the whole doctoral process, and uh, it's a. My my daughter-in-law is going through it right now, and people have so much control. Unless you've got a good doctoral committee, one that's really good, that that's willing to work with you, and he must have. He must have had the doctoral committee from heaven, um, to to be able to do this. But uh, it's it's really hard to do and to color outside the lines in any way. And so his, his working and his his capacity to work out loud through the whole thing is just astonishing, and it's a great example mm -hmm. for all of us. And it should be a great example in academia. But I think what it is is it's a it's a thing that points out the limitations of academia. You know, um, so. Well, it seems to be a little. A little bit from even to open scholarship. You know, yeah. you know, open scholarship is a thing, right? But it sort of indicates that you share polished, finished works in a particular way. Right, peer-reviewed way. Whereas, whereas what Nick is doing is is not that. No. And and it it uh, I think it touches a lot of people because you can go, oh well, I keep notes too, and what could I do with those notes? So I could actually share those notes and then share progress. So, yeah, I think it's interesting that it's different to what I've seen as open scholarship. Could we, um, when we, so as we work on this abstract, right, could we throw it into YAPNet as a draft and get people to comment on it? Yeah, let's do that. That's a great idea. I mean, let's live what we're trying to write about and yeah. see what, I don't, I don't know how much feedback we get, but um, yeah. I think it'd be valuable for like I'm sure like Laura and others would jump in and yeah. Very uh, interesting to test uh, web record on Yapnet just to make sure that would work. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I so if it we will. as a closed site, so, will it? I think if you it you it's very, it first. varies. It's, it varies. So I you know you just got to go in and try it, and I'd be willing to do it. I'd go in and try it. If, uh, but so of course, the beauty with Yapnet is that you know we have access to the the builders of that, <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. and so you know if there's something that needs to be changed, it's possible that it could be. But yeah, yeah. let's do that. The ideas into Yapnet, and okay. it's uh, we could do it through a wiki, which is equivalent to a Google Doc. Uh, I'm just not sure if that would get I don't know unwieldy or hard to track. Um, anyway, let's yeah. Give okay, it a... I, I was. This is kind of a different tangent, but I was just thinking that. So I was trying to remember how I learned about the book, and it's actually it was in Rizo fourteen or fifteen, right? I think either Ron or Simon threw it into the Google uh, Plus community at one point. Because I don't remember what we're doing, but it might have been the uh, connection to the rhizomatic stuff. And Nick kind of references, but I mean, just think how think of the journey right, of connection to the book um, is kind of fascinating too. Kind of where we are now, four or five years later, still kind of thinking about it, um, and still has uh, relevance. How many other um, academic textbooks can we say that about? <laughs> 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 it's actually resonating like forward. Yeah, no, it's not. It doesn't it's slow down. It, no, 
No, not at all. I mean, I, I pick the book up on a regular basis. I keep it in my pile where <laughs> I see it. So I, I do pick it up. So agreed. So um, I guess we'd have to include the um, call for papers information so that if somebody's looking at it and then reading our abstract, they can say, try this, try that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we, we can uh, maybe put some context around it a little bit for people who don't know what we're talking about at all. It's just an all that unusual. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you mean we're going to be we're going to be working out loud on, on this? <laughs> it, and it's it's great that it feels totally familiar. You know, like it's uh, we've we've been doing it. You guys have been doing it together for longer than than I have, but. I, uh, it's just like, oh yeah, well, of course that's a way to work. That's, that's yep. normal. And, yeah. uh, and we, I like the creating as we go, you know, it's not just, oh, let's just do the text and then we'll mm -hmm. see. And then later on, but, uh, that maker aspect is, um, it's really good. That's what I like to do. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to start that document for us, Wendy, and then share it out with us? Would that be okay? Yeah, I can do. <clears throat> I'm starting my day. Okay. Thank you, because I'm starting my school year here real soon. <laughs> yeah. Pray yeah, for it's me. It's quite different. <laughs> um, the terms here, uh, so my son's in grade three, and he's just, he's sort of in the middle of his term three. Mm. So we've just had a long, we have a long winter break. Um, but yeah, the schooling is quite different. And I've got friends that live here that follow your uh timings so that's weird it yeah. is weird yeah. wow <laughs> <laughs> homes homes schooled so but it's still yeah it's yeah. quite different huh. wow all right well if you don't mind getting that started maybe throw just a couple of um like framing ideas that we talked about that'd be great um i'm gonna wait for a couple of days this week but then i'll, I'll jump in yeah i'll i'll work all on right. it too and um you know, whatever you choose to use, a wiki, whatever it is, we'll, you know, if it proves unwieldy, we'll just switch to something else or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I think it'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as this recording's available, Terry, that it, that'll probably help as well. Okay. I will stop yeah. recording here in a minute. It's so good to think about where we all are on the globe and know that, <laughs> know that, uh, that we can do this. I mean, I, I, it, it's, it just blows my mind every time, every single time. Yeah, Thank you. It's, yeah, three cheers for technology, for sure. It's, you uh, know, I, I mean, if they, I'll throw it out there, but I mean, if they don't accept the abstract, we could still do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't need them. That's yeah. how I've approached my last two projects. <laughs> I created a, a video poem with, um, with an artist in, in another state. I remember here. you mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, so it, we, we just said, look, we're going to do this anyway. And if it doesn't get accepted for the journal, then we'll publish it Yeah. at any rate. So. Just, we'll just make our own journal, the journal of whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, <it's the> <laughs> hey, I'm writing that so. down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll get this up. All right. Uh, uh, Good. All right. We, nice we working with y'all. We will. Yeah. We will. All right. So we'll connect back in maybe after we get a little bit down, right? And try to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I think another synchronous uh, chat in, you know, maybe a week and a half. Okay. okay. And that'll give us enough time to do edits after that as yep. well. And Sounds then, good. Yeah. And if you all think of, um, I don't know if you want to do, probably not right now, but if you do think of particular links that, that you have done, things that you have done that you would want to include in a, like in a commentary, um, then send them to me and I'll put them all together in one place. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Good all night, right. every good night, good day, good day, everyone. Yeah, good day. <laughs>